Love and Rage Anarchist Federation came out of a anarchist conference in San Francisco in 1989, and it originally started as a newspaper project to do a, a, a continent-wide anarchist newspaper. That alone was controversial among some anarchists who, who, who were so localist that they couldn't imagine doing some broad continental project. But then from there, it quickly turned from a newspaper into a, a loose network and then into a membership organization. I joined in 92, 93, when it became a membership organization. And uh, the purpose of Love and Rage was to gather like-minded anarchists in Mexico, Canada, and the United States who had similar politics, uh, politics around uh, the belief in, in the need for anarchists to be organized, the need for the working class to be organized, the centrality of, of, of white supremacy and, and the centrality of uh, patriarchy in understanding how capitalism functions in the United States and a commitment to, to building um, a revolutionary alternative to those. And I was, a, I was part of Love and Rage from, like I said, 92, 93 until it, uh, until it, it dissolved in 98, I believe. And we went from this, as an or, once we became a membership organization, we went from a group that was terribly undisciplined didn't even know how to argue politics with, with each other. And that, will, in other words, we are a pretty accurate reflection of the anarchism scene at the time. And went and, and developed into a fairly uh, disciplined uh, anarchist organization. And by disciplined, I mean we could make decisions and carry them out, and we could have useful political debate, and we could make decisions based on those debates. Ironically, that degree of debate led to, to split of the split in the organization that, that did the group in and the group went uh, the group dissolved about a year before Seattle and I always wondered what happens if Love and Rage had been around and been a strong force when Seattle happened in 1999 I wonder if uh, anarchist history might be a little bit different but we you know, and, and the funny thing to me about Love and Rage is that nowadays Love and Rage is looked on favorably by folks people look at me like oh Oh, you used to be a Love and Rage. Cool. We were so fucking hated in in the 1990s when we existed. Every anarchist in the world thought we were Trotskyists, Maoists, Leninists, Stalinists, whatever Marxist insult you could hurl at us. That's what we were because we believed in organization. And uh, it, was, it was remarkable. Uh, and after a while, we began to take a little bit of pride in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in that hatred, that useless magazines like Anarchy Magazine would, would hurl at us and it became a little badge of pride. Uh, but we definitely broke, we definitely arti uh, articulated one brand of anarchism that was very distinct from the anti-civilizational and anti-organizational perspectives that existed in the, that came out in, in, the, in the 80s and 90s, like Fifth Estate and Anarchy Magazine, and that, you know, still exist in some extent to this day. Folk, uh, yeah, still exist in some extent.